This video is sponsored by Squarespace. No one can stop you with a Squarespace website. After months of hinting, John Boyega couldn't wait any longer and came out and discussed his disappointment with his role in the Disney Star Wars films. And he's done it within a year of its release. Very impressive, John. It usually takes a lot longer than that to get the truth out. And boy, has that put some social justice warrior shills in an awkward position. Up to now, their go-to for anyone who had a problem with Finn's character was to call them a racist. But what do you do if the actor that played the character has the same opinion as these so-called racists? British GQ recently did an interview with John, and of course the subject of Star Wars came up, and he had some very interesting things to say. John said, What I would say to Disney is don't bring out a black character, mark them to be much more important in the franchise than they are, and then have them pushed to the side. It's not good. I'll say it straight up. Like, you guys knew what to do with Daisy Ridley. You guys knew what to do with Adam Driver. You knew what to do with these other people. But when it came to Kelly Marie Tran, when it came to John Boyega, you knew fuck all. So what do you want me to say? What they want you to say is, I enjoyed being part of it. It was a great experience. Nah, 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 nah. I'll take that deal when it's a great experience. They gave all the nuance to Adam Driver. All the nuance to Daisy Ridley. Let's be honest. Daisy knows this. Adam knows this. Everybody knows. I'm not exposing anything. John also talks about Naomi Aki and Kelly Marie Tran and even Oscar Isaac suffering the same treatment. And John's description of black characters and blockbusters couldn't be more spot on. They're always scared. They're always friggin' sweating. And to make sure it's very clear he's talking about his character's poor treatment, starting with The Last Jedi, he also adds about JJ's return. He wasn't even supposed to come back and try and save your shit. You're a selfish traitor. Now John's frustrations are fully understandable. The first new piece of Star Wars footage after so many years <laughs> was that of Finn. Was this going to be a Stormtrooper defecting? If so, fucking great idea. Is it someone in disguise? It suggested so many exciting opportunities. And then, oh dear. Now I am a fan of films using relatively unknown actors, which John was, but I did recognise him from Attack the Block. Now John was very good in Attack the Block, and trust me, he had a lot more character than he ended up with in Star Wars, but we were naive back then when that teaser came out. We didn't know what was to come. And sadly, neither did John. Then the movie poster came out. Not only did John's character Finn look like he was going to be pretty important, now he was carrying a lightsaber. And it was a blue one. Now I'm starting to get very interested. I had lived through Jar Jar Binks, so trust me, I was still cautious. But my excitement was definitely growing. The possibility of a stormtrooper becoming a Jedi seemed not only exciting, but also original. And then we got this. Chewie. We're home. And fuck yeah. yeah! I'm now fully in. Sell me tickets now, bitches. Now that was my level of excitement. I can only imagine how excited John must have felt. Starring in a Star Wars movie, fucking childhood dream come true. I'm going to be in Star Wars one day. More like a loser on YouTube, dipshit. What's a YouTube? Now, unlike a lot of other people who correctly predicted where this franchise was heading, I enjoyed The Force Awakens. A lot. Yes, we'd seen a lot of it before, but I thought J.J. Abrams had big plans. We'll get back to that some other time. And his first film was just a soft reboot to ease people into the new series of films. A lot of us left the cinema that day quite relaxed, as we hadn't been raped by another Jar Jar Binks. Little did we know that by the end of the new trilogy, we'd look back at Jar Jar with great fondness, wishing we could go back to simpler times when even the worst characters could not destroy my love for the franchise. And John made it through The Force Awakens looking pretty good. He even got to do some things that were brave. We'll use the charges to blow that blast door. I'll go in and draw fire, but I'm going to need cover. Sure you're up for this? Hell no. 
I'll go in and try to find Ray. The troopers will be on our tail. And his relationship with Ray even looked interesting. What if they did start a relationship and then both became Jedi so couldn't be together? That would have been pretty cool. Sadly for John, the development of his character stopped at the end of Force Awakens. He actually went backwards. You don't know the First Order like I do. They'll slaughter us. We all need to run. Instead of a highly trained stormtrooper, child slave, dark side defecting hero with force abilities, we got goofball clown sidekick. The first guy we were introduced to, who started off this story, isn't even important in the end. He doesn't even get the girl. Well, no one does. Oh, hello. Someone got the girl. Let the scissoring begin. Finn's journey backwards started with The Last Jedi. Ryan's desperate attempt to be on the cool kids table and prove he was one of the girls had him go out of his way to belittle every male character. Character. And I think one of the worst to watch was Finn. <laughs> Nothing like having your character who escaped slavery and the horrors of war acting like a buffoon and then getting slavery and the horrors of war explained to him by two new characters that don't even know him or what he's been through. You don't know a thing about me, where I'm from, what I've seen. You don't know the First Order like I do. A young black actor has to sit quietly while the stereotypical Asian tech nerd and the middle-aged white dude talk. Now, at the time of Last Jedi, mine and many, many other people's huge sin was to point out how badly these characters were written. The social justice warrior shills came out of the woodwork to declare we were all racist and misogynist. And that's all it could be. These characters were amazing, apparently. Just give it to me one more time, simpler. And this is where we see the difference between social justice warriors and normal people. Now, a normal person usually finds it easy to feel if they like a character or not. Little things just click in their heads that make them enjoy certain characteristics. Some are personal, while a lot are shared human qualities. That's why some characters are loved by all. It could be any number of things. They think they're cool, tough, maybe lethal, funny, charismatic, unbelievably skilled. Or what my mother would always say about Apollo Creed, sexy and God made him. Oh, I do remember the horror of waking late at night in my little robot bed to the, the sound of the Rocky VHS getting another workout. Maybe tomorrow I'll have a new daddy. It's time to take me to the moon, bing bong. When a normal person finds themselves liking a character, it usually comes from a subconscious level. Yes, the interest might be a conscious decision, as in, I like Star Wars, or I like Kung Fu, or strong women. These reasons may have you going into the film wanting to like that character, but connecting or enjoying a character should be, at the time of watching, just naturally happening. And if it's not happening, no matter how much you want it to, like me watching Finn in Last Jedi, if it's not happening, it's usually very obvious why. And in Finn's case, it was the terrible writing and the fact Finn, who had started as one of the leads, was now just a supporting character. An ex-soldier had been turned into an idiot. Now, a social justice warrior doesn't have any of these types of issues. When they open up the little list in their head that contains their own personal likes and interests, it's pretty empty because they are only interested in the superficial, not what makes us human. It's all about their junk, skin color, and who they want to rub against. Things normal people usually don't think about when enjoying a character. Look, I'm sure like the rest of us, Ripley may have had a big old crush on Private Vasquez for all we know. Yes, of course they'd make a lovely couple, but we don't care. We only care if she lives and she saves that little girl. Can't wait to see that little Little Girl in Aliens 3. I don't remember getting the old VHS out of Beverly Hills Cop when I was a boy and thinking, man, Eddie is cool, smart, charismatic, and funny as fuck, but I'm not interested because he's not like me, a robot. No, social justice warriors lists only contain shallow things. This is why social justice warriors support any garbage that is ticking the boxes they think are important, no matter how the actors feel or what crap role they've been given. This is also why they get so excited when it is announced that a classic film is going to be remade, but they're going to swap the genders or race, because that's the only criteria they care about. The power of pity compels you! <laughs> Craft, talent, care for a good story? means nothing to the social justice warrior. They just think Finn's great because Finn's there. Who cares if they made him a joke? Who cares if John is completely disappointed? He's ticked the list. He's good. This attitude leads to professionals like John being disappointed in receiving second class roles and gives the approval to Hollywood to just keep doing what they're doing. But worse than your average woke Twitter clown who is calling people racist for not enjoying this. Uh. 
is the shill media who stand and applaud any crap to guarantee their next free ticket and the chance to interview JJ or Ryan. They are selling out people like John and Kelly by applauding horrible token film roles, roles with bad dialogue and little impact on the story. And don't talk about the stupid fucking beacon thing that Finn got to do. How do you know? A feeling. Even if that scene wasn't ridiculous, it didn't make up for his two films of complete simping for Ray. We gotta get this beacon far away from here. Then she'll find me and be safe. Ray! Ray, I never told you, Ray! 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 Can't leave her! We can't! Ray! A super quick break to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Wanting to get your business on the move, but it feels like every day has some new surprise? Feeling like things are holding you back? Feeling like you can't even go outside? Well, don't let that stop you. Make the most of your situation. With the Squarespace website, no one can stop you living the dream or making some of that delicious money. Be seen the way you want to be seen with a professionally designed website that won't cost you a fortune and it's easy to do. Choose from any of the professionally designed templates, all of which can be customized. Add photo galleries, portfolios, and my favorite, video blocks. Look at all that great content. You can even have video backgrounds. Squarespace also has incredible marketing tools to heat up your social content. So be ready for all that extra attention you're about to receive. Everyone does something interesting. It's time to share it with the world. Go to Squarespace for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch into the world, go to squarespace.com slash robot head and you will receive a full 10% off your first purchase. Show us what you've got. But what is a shill to do after John confirmed that he agreed with the people that said his role ended up being badly written and that his character had been pushed to the background? How is a shill to respond when John talks about how the reordered character hierarchy of The Last Jedi was particularly hard to take? Well, if you're like one of our favourite shills, Brian, I have no gag reflex for Ryan Johnson, young, you first do the obliged, heartbreaking comment and wish things were better, and then you just dismiss what John says and remind everyone that The Last Jedi deepened his character and that it was the rise of Skywalker that just didn't, didn't, just didn't quite pay it off. You have John discussing how his character being pushed aside in The Last Jedi was hard to take and uses the words of JJ coming back after Last Jedi as saving your shit and Brian decides to point out that he is wrong. That's some fucking balls, Brian. And they're Ryan's and they're in your mouth. But it's not just the small potatoes like Brian who like to ignore or twist what some actors say. Angela Watercutter, senior editor of Wired, recent article could have her up for a special mention at the Modern Writers Woke Awards later. Later this year. You see, back in late 2017, Angela reviewed The Last Jedi. And let me just say, Angela's review is a real feast for the brain. She ticks off all the modern journalism classics, digs at the old guard, misogynists, racists. You know, it wouldn't be a movie review without them. Every entitled troll, another classic, and toxic masculinity. Look, there's too many to list, but trust me, Angela's got them all. Every observation is flavoured by her wokeness. Waxing lyrical about Canto Bite and its longer arc that tackles real issues. Because remember kids, war is bad. Yes, I know. Canto Bite. If only Angela had the foresight to see that Canto Bite would come to be seen as the worst and most pointless segment of any Star Wars film. Slightly awkward for her. But happily and fitting for a senior editor at Wired, she pulls out one of my favourite lines. The Star Wars fan upset that the franchise heroes now include, oh, wait for it, clutches pearls, women and people of colour. Bravo, preach it sister. Yes, straight out lies to pump up her wonderful review. Angela, as you can see, is such a champion of women and people of colour in film that she'll deny their total existence to fit her agenda. And I'm guessing, make her job a lot easier. We don't need any of your help. Angela, and she's not alone here, also talks as if Star Wars nerds don't watch anything else in between Star Wars movies getting released. Does she actually think the long-time Star Wars fans aren't also fans of Terminator? Alien, Star Trek, Tarantino, The Matrix, Mad Max, Lucy Liu, Game of Thrones, superheroes, every 80s action film, Lucy Liu, martial arts films, wait, haven't I done this somewhere before? Most sci-fi, comedy, Lucy Liu, and three fucking decades of Will Smith movies, just to name a few, somehow in Angela's mind. 
these problem Star Wars fans have avoided enjoying all of these movies. And that's why the sight of John is such a shock to them. Sorry, Lando. <laughs> Would you get going, you pirate? The woke shills that write these type of exploitative articles also like to conveniently forget that Rogue One, with its female lead and truly diverse cast, was highly successful and is probably the most evenly liked, if not loved, Disney release across the fan base. While Solo, with its male white lead, completely bombed on release. It does seem to me odd that Angela uses the term Clutch's Pearls as a put down to supposed misogynists, seeing as Clutch's Pearls refers to acting like an overdramatic woman. Angela seems to be pushing the stereotype of women a bit too far. It seems a bit, what would you say, misogynistic? <laughs> In case I'm wrong, let's just check. You might also hear it used to describe a man, though it tends to carry sexist overtones then. It makes it imply that he's weak, oversensitive, or anything else stereotypically seen as negative female traits. Oh, again, Angela, a little bit awkward there. Bing, but the absolute pinnacle of self-delusion and lack of self-awareness is Angela's most recent Star Wars article. John Boyega is right about Star Wars. Obvious to those who watched the trilogy. Obvious to Angela, but not worthy of mentioning in any of Angela's previous articles regarding Star Wars. So brave, Angela. So, so brave. You are great. I suspect Angela actually didn't find it so obvious to see through her woke lenses, which is lucky for her because if she had said anything about the pathetic characters John and Kelly Marie Tran were given to play, she would have been called a racist and a misogynist, just like the rest of us were. Again, Angela, so brave. You are great. And you would think that after John has opened up about his experience, you would think that Angela, being a... Uh, <coughs> journalist would want to focus on J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson who both wrote and directed these films to investigate why and how this happened to John and Kelly. You could imagine that Angela would discuss why Kathleen Kennedy didn't step in and insist on John and Kelly's roles being made more important to the story. Angela could have written an amazing article on how Disney and Lucasfilm should do better but no there is no chance we're getting that from Angela because to her it's still all about the toxic fans and that's all she wants to talk about. You see, even though Angela now states that it was obvious to those who watched the trilogy, she also states that most people talking about it at the time, you know, doing what Angela would have done if Angela had a spine or could see past her own wokeness, is the people talking about it at the time were actually fans decrying inclusion. I'm not sure how Angela would defend that opinion to the people of colour who were upset about the dumbing down of Finn and The Last Jedi. Coming to her own conclusion that much of the talk was anti-inclusion makes it seem as if Angela doesn't even consider their opinion, which if true is frightening for a senior editor with a large platform. Maybe Angela should not assume that as John said, black characters always being scared and always freaking sweating is good enough. She also states that there was far less talk about what happened with those characters once their stories unfolded on screen. Angela's implying that the people discussing John at the time stopped talking about it because they were satisfied that John was pushed aside by the end of the story. Jesus Christ! Angela just can't comprehend that people are talking about John's situation less now because they have been talking about the treatment of John's character for two years while you were too busy making sure you were getting your next Disney press pass. Angela's article is so self-serving and delusional that she is more worried about being right than supporting the actors of colour and discussing Disney and Lucasfilm's treatment of them. It is ironic that Angela's lovely headline that just celebrates diversity, The Last Jedi Will Bother Some People, Good, is above a photo of two actors who were probably the most bothered about how their characters were betrayed. I wonder if that's also good. The price of Reason called Angela out on this via Twitter. Angela's response was a lovely piece of denial. Not contradictory. Oh my god. Okay, let's make this as easy as possible for Angela. Here in this article, John is very clearly talking about the dumbing down of his character in The Last Jedi. He even talks about JJ coming back to quote, fix your shit. Angela not only states that she agrees with John, but also states that it was obvious. Here in the former article, Angela praises the character of Finn calling Finn's and Rose's trip to Canto Bight one of the top-level examples of the film bringing real issues to the fore. To drive it home, Angela also quotes Jen Yamato from the Los Angeles Times. Films like these leave their mark on an entire generation. Representation matters, which, and I'm sure John would agree, be a nice quote if it wasn't about this film. 
Amazingly, and I'm sure it's with a straight face, Angela says, praising the characters of Finn and Rose in The Last Jedi and calling them top-level examples in this article and then agreeing with John about the poor treatment of Finn and Rose's characters in The Last Jedi while smugly adding it was obvious in this article is somehow, wait for it, not a contradiction. Everybody knows you never go full retard. No, oh, Hunter S. Thompson. Christ, Angela. You'd have him turning in his grave if Johnny Depp hadn't spent $3 million to shoot him out of a cannon. Everyone needs a friend like Johnny. You shoot yourself in the head and then your friend shoots you out of a cannon just to make sure everyone got the point. <laughs> John also talks about the difficulties of trying to operate within what can feel like a permanently rigged system. A system called Hollywood that can easily deflect any criticism. We saw it in the past with Kelly Marie Tran. Kelly released an interesting open letter regarding her youth and working in Hollywood. In it, she is clearly talking about society as a whole and the Hollywood system. How did the media handle this and not upset the Hollywood overlords? Well, they changed it into an article about online hate. And if you don't believe me, just refer to the original article. Oh, and even though this looks like a quote, it's not. This doesn't appear anywhere in Kelly's letter. Oh, and that also goes from the note from the editor that is also not taken from Kelly's letter. So you have to understand that the editor didn't believe that Kelly's words would speak for themselves because what Kelly was saying was pointing to people like the editor and their employers. You see, if you put online harassment in large font, again, not mentioned by Kelly, above a part quote from Kelly, people just automatically put the two and two together and assume that's what she's talking about. Tricky little fucking editor. But if you take the time to read the open letter, the open letter that doesn't mention and online harassment once, you see that Kelly points the finger at the media, Hollywood, and companies that profited from her insecurities that the companies perpetrated in the first place. Fucking ouch, Kelly. No mention of Star Wars fans, and to think after posting this, JJ reduced her role in the final film. Do we believe this? Now, after the New York Times posted the original article, how did all the other media outlets report on this open letter? <laughs> what a surprise. They just repeated the same headlines the New York Times editor had added into Kelly's letter. And now idiots say her harassment is well documented, even though all the other news outlets went with using the lines from the New York Times that the editor put in that weren't part of Kelly's open letter. And just like magic, Hollywood and the media are no longer the focus of Kelly's letter. It's back to the toxic fans that she didn't mention. Now, I'm no <laughs> oh, I can feel the people getting angry with me saying that one. I'm sure, like everyone online, actors receive their fair share of morons, including dipshit racists. I quite often get abuse for being Australian. Nobody talks about Mick like that. Kangaroo shagger. Idiot. Doesn't he know how hard they are to catch? John talks about idiots saying he can't be a stormtrooper because he is black. Which is fucking horrible and ridiculous. But to claim everyone who points out how badly written a character is that happens to be a person of colour or female as a racist or a misogynist gives Hollywood a free pass. These shills applauding their token efforts just encourages them to keep the charade up that they actually care when all they care about is the money. John was shrunk down to the point that he virtually disappears in the Chinese version of the Force Awakens poster. Was that a toxic fan call or a move by Disney to bow down to real racism? just for more fucking money. Was it the so-called toxic fans that asked for that? No. Kelly calls it out and so does John. But somehow these shills ignore that and keep blaming the toxic fans. And if the Mulan film has taught us anything, it's that they don't care and they don't plan on changing. If Disney can go as far as thanking the Public Security Bureau of Tupan, where several re-education camps are located, the same camps that detain thousands of innocent people because of their culture and beliefs, if you're publicly thanking those people on what is meant to be the biggest film of the year, you don't have any plans of changing anytime soon. Now, if Hollywood's really concerned about representation and opportunity for minorities, they wouldn't be doing crap like having to get certain quotas for your chance to win an Oscar. Finn's character ticks that box. Do you think that makes John any happier? No, instead of giving token roles like poor Finn that has to run around screaming for the white people, companies like Disney could, I don't know, for every hundred million they spend on complete trash, give 10 million to some young disadvantaged filmmaker who can then populate the film however he wants. This would bring in far more diverse people into the industry than giving out token positions like Janitor or Nerd Girl. The Last Jedi alone cost around $317 million and that's without advertising. Now imagine what our 10% new talent fund could get us. That one film alone would get us another 
another six Get Out movies, or another three and a half Train to Basans, or if I could talk everyone into it, 300 more A Ghost Stories. Christ, that pie-eating scene would fucking go on forever. This would give us lots of new faces in lead roles. And with Disney just removing John from the poster in China and everyone applauding their tokenism, if they can get away with it, why not other companies? Just recently, John had to step down as Joe Malone Brand's international ambassador after they removed him from the Chinese advertising. Yes, they did a Disney. And not just any ad. An ad that John created and directed and celebrated his personal story, showcasing his hometown, including his friends and family. These companies just don't give a fuck. Sadly for the Joe Malone brand, they don't have thousands of shills that'll do their bidding and blame their own customers for John being mistreated. Joe Malone have come out and apologised to John, as they should. Now we're just waiting on Kathleen Kennedy's, Ryan Johnson's and JJ Abrams apology. So next time one of you shill clowns or Disney defenders want to call someone a racist, maybe look at the company and people you are defending. Because I'm telling you, pointing out where minorities and women are given terrible roles does more to help them get better roles in the future than clapping at any crap some studio feeds you. But to do that, you're going to have to risk those free fucking movie tickets. And on that cheery note, let's hope John and Kelly get to be in a good film soon. Looks like Oscar's going to be doing okay. And if you don't agree with anything I say, and if you don't agree with John's assessment of Finn, Rose and Poe, and you can just ignore how the actors feel, then go watch the amazing Star Wars series and enjoy it because John, Kelly and Oscar don't.